Hey, what's up everyone? Jeff Kinder here and we are back with another video and today starts part two of the Phoenix Restoration Cabinet. So when we last left off, we picked up this cabinet. I think it was back in maybe late September, early October. We picked up this cabinet from Joe Zabo. Uh, I got it cheap, but it had some water damage. And um, we got it back here. We took everything out of the cabinet and we looked at it a little closer. And I found that the water damage is up about right. I mean, it's about 10 inches up on the bottom of the cabinet. So I said, all right, well, you know, maybe I can cut the bottoms of the cabinet off and splice in new pieces. But then I started to think, I was like, you know what? Um, these are Centuri cabinets. They're really easy to come apart. They're only held together with carriage bolts and some screws on the inside. So what I was going to do was just pop the one side off cut out a new side and put it on and then come over to the other side, take that side off, cut a new side, put it on and do the same for the front. So I figured that's what we're going to do with this cabinet. We're going to give it all new sides and get rid of all that water damage on the sides and in the front. Um, so then the next thing I needed to do was this wood grain uh, texture. Now, in my uh, Vanguard video, I did wood grain vinyl and I got the vinyl um, and I, it wasn't a hundred percent, you know, you know, hundred percent exact to the original. And I wasn't really 100% happy with how it, you know, the, the match was. So what I did was I cut a side off of this. I cut a piece off of this, you can see right there. And I sent it down to my, uh, uh, my guy, John, from Top Cabinet Hardware. That's, he's down in Florida, and he's where I get all my uh, laminate from. In fact, the donkey, all the Donkey Kong cabinets that I did, uh, I got all my laminate from him. The guy, John, super, super helpful, super nice. He will really, really go out of his way to get you what you need. Uh, so I sent him a sample, that piece right there. Uh, and he matched it. He got me, uh, he sent me back a, a sample swatch of the um, laminate and it is like 99%. I mean, it is so close. So I just said, all right, definitely. So I ordered a bunch of sheets from him for that and uh, they're going to come here and we're going to, you know, use that for this cabinet. So um, that's what we're going to do. And um, yeah, so it's... Uh, it's early morning right now, I'm dying, so let's hop in the car, go to Dunkin' Donuts, get a coffee, then we're gonna shoot over to Home Depot, pick up some particle board, have them cut it out there, and then we'll get back here and see what we got. All right, let's go. All right, we are back from Home Depot and I got the wood cut. So what I usually do, um, you know, the sheets, they're four by eight sheets and um, particle board, which this is, if you look at it, I don't know how close that's gonna come, but it's particle board. It's basically particles. Uh, it's probably like, you know, glue and sawdust and wood particles and stuff like that. But particle board is heavy. Um, so four by eight sheet, handling it by myself, very, very difficult. Um, so I usually have them cut it. I'll give them rough sizes. Like I measured the Phoenix cab and it's probably 72 inches from top to bottom. So this piece is most, I probably told them to cut it at like 73 inches. Um, you know, uh, and then whatever the width was, maybe that's 30 inches going across. So I told them to cut it at 30 inches just so I have a more manageable piece when I 
put it on top of the Phoenix cabinet to, you know, on top of that piece to trace it, it's a lot more manageable. And those are the leftover pieces. So the smaller pieces there, that'll be used for that front panel there and that bottom piece down there. And that stuff is just extra. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I do. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I am going to put this cabinet on its side and undo all the carriage bolts, pop the side off, uh, and then we'll see what we got. All right, let's get to work. So I got all the carriage bolts out, uh, took all the screws out, let's get those off and we'll see what it looks like trying to get this side off. Um, I did notice right here and right here somebody nailed, so we're going to just uh, hit that to loosen up the nails and I think that should be everything. I don't know what else is holding it. Oh, you know what it is? There's probably something over here that I'm not seeing. Let's see. Uh, got that one out. It's up in front here. Feels like something's holding it still right in here. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Two screws holding the metal clip right there. Uh, what do I do with my screwdriver? There it is. Let's get those screws out. And then this should pop right off. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, I do have a little hand screw gun, but the battery is dead, of course. And uh, my drill with the screw attachment is just too big and uh, bulky. So, get these two last screws out, and this should be it. And this should pop off. Let's see. Still something. There's something holding it. I can't see. Now it feels like something here. Probably more screws. Let's take a look around back and see what we could find. And yep, there's two more screws here. Got all these little brackets all over the place that are holding this thing together. I think I said it in a, another video. I would have never guessed, like if someone told me to put a cabinet together, I would never have thought to use metal brackets and carriage bolts and screws. I would have thought that that would not stay together. But I got to tell you, Every one of these Centuri cabinets and these like the Centuri Konami, you know, Konami Centuri, like track and field and all those other ones. I mean, they're all done the same way and uh, they're solid, solid. Every one of these cabinets I come across, no matter how beat up it is, they're, they're just 
rock solid. Like they don't, uh, they don't um, come apart. So carriage bolts and screws are definitely, uh, definitely the way to go, apparently. So I think this nail is still holding things in place here. still feels like there's something. What is holding it together? Am I missing something? That looks like there's, you know what? It looks like somebody put a piece of blocking in here and glued it. That normally wasn't there. So let's just give it a good whack. side off here and stand it up over here for now there we go let me bring the camera over here let's see All right, so we got the bottom of the cabinet off and we could see the side of the cabinet. So yeah, you can see there was some staples. They had a few staples holding it in place there. And it looks like up here, there was some staples. Not many, but it's basically just held together with these brackets and carriage bolts. So, so that's that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna set up the saw horses and uh, get this piece ready and on top of one of the new pieces and we will get one of these sides cut out. And then um, I drill the holes, put it in place, and then we just swap all the blocking over, no biggie. And that's that. All right, so I got the wood clamped down, uh, new wood on top of the existing. Um, I just lined it up with the back edge so it's just less to cut because the back edge was nice. Uh, I made some markings here of where to stop cutting. So when I'm coming down to stop here and the same thing coming down to not cut any below there. Well, I'm not cutting there, but, and that's just because the bottom edge is all chewed up here. So I don't want to trace that. So when I'm, coming down see if we look underneath here as i'm coming down here i want to stop right about there um you can see where i made that mark otherwise i'll start copying that which i don't want to do so i'll just you know stop there and then i got the bottom edge lined up you can see how water damaged that wood was it's pretty it's obviously thicker than three quarters of an inch and uh, it's all just cruddy and everything like that. So that's what we're gonna do. I got the router set up. I got the bit all ready to go. It's lubed up. Uh, I got it at the right height. So let me just set the camera up right now here. And uh, we could start cutting a little bit. Get this camera and got a new, new camera, new tripod. Trying to figure all this stuff out here. Uh, one thing I like to do when I cut is uh, I'll stop a little bit. I'll cut some, stop, put some more um, three-in-one oil on the bearing. Um, because when you're cutting this stuff, it, the bit and everything heats up. And then I found, I've learned this the hard way a few times, that the um, bit, I mean the uh, bearing will get hot and then plugged up with all the sawdust and then it'll seize up. And then what happens is the bearing starts spinning with the bit and then the bearing will start digging into your original piece. And that just makes an absolute mess. 
So um, yeah, so that's, uh, I usually cut a little bit, stop, let it cool down, clean it, put some more three in one oil on it, and then just repeat the process. So I guess we'll start down here, uh, right about here. So I'm gonna go in, turn it on, go in, and then follow it around. All right, so let me show you what I did here. Let me just get the camera off the tripod. So what I did was I slid the piece up and clamped it down, but I made sure it was the edge was straight because what I did was I lined this edge up with here. So I needed a straight edge to cut this down, right? So this is perfectly flush in there. So I'm gonna come down with the router and then cut that perfectly straight and match it with that. So that will do that. Cause I couldn't do that down here cause this bottom corner was all chewed up. So if I would have came down with the router before when it hit this point, it would have gotten all, you know, all chewed up. So now I'll make a square edge and then I'll just come with the sander later and just round that the way it normally was. It had a slight little round to it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna just come down with the router, chop that off, and I'll have a square edge here. And there's a square edge there. And like I said, before I you know, put the laminate on or anything, when I'm doing my sanding phase, I just round that really nice, just give it a nice little edge. And uh, that's that. So let me set the camera back up here and we'll cut that piece off. And then what we're gonna do is we will take that side, just kind of clean it up, make sure it looks good. And then I'm going to use that side to cut the other side. You know, I'm going to use that, that other piece of wood that's sitting over there. So uh, I'm going to do that right now. Let me uh, get the router, cut that piece off, and then we will clean it up and then <clears throat> cut the other piece out as well. So I got both sides cut now. Let me get the camera off the tripod here. We'll take a look. So we got both sides cut exact. Um, the cut all nice. All the edges are looking good. Oop, I forgot to cut that. I gotta cut that piece yet. All right, let me set up the, uh, <laughs> put the clamps back on it and cop that off. But the reason why I skipped that was because I had the clamp here. So I just need to move the clamp over here, then cut that off. But um, everything is good. So what I'm going to do now, cut that little chunk off there, 
then I'm going to just sand everything down, sand the edges down. You know, they're a little rough, but I'll get it all nice. Then what I want to do is put that original piece back on top of this piece so I can get it lined up just right and then drill all the carriage bolts holes where they were. So when I take this piece and plop it down on top of the cabinet over there, it'll just go right in and it knows exactly where to go because the carriage bolts, you know, the holes will be there and everything will just go back together perfectly the way it was. Uh, so that is that. I'm going to set up the camera right now and start working on that. Okay, so we got the cabinet uh, sides all sanded down. I got this one ready and that one over there ready. So um, both sides are sanded. So what I'm gonna do is one side, the insides of the cabinet, I'm gonna give them a coat of this bullseye, Zinzer bullseye shellac, it's clear. It goes on like water uh, and then it just seals the uh, particle board really nice. And then um, once that's dry, then I'll put uh, two coats of this, uh, or maybe one, now probably two coats of the uh, Painter's Touch uh, semi-gloss black. So um, yeah, I mean, you could paint the uh, particle board directly, but what happens is the paint just starts to soak into the particle board and then you just get really, you, get, you see a lot of the texture of the particle board come out. The paint brings out the, the uh, texture. Um, so uh, you wanna try to avoid that. I mean, you don't have to avoid that, but if you wanna try to avoid it, then you put this, um, you know, this clear coat shellac down. I forgot to shake it. I think you shake it, I don't know, probably. So yeah, um, Joe Zabo from Zabo's Arcade, he uh, did a video uh, and he demonstrated how, um, how it looks when you paint regular particle board versus putting this clear shellac down and then doing, um, you know, painting on top of that. And you can see it's a huge difference. Uh, I'll put a link to that video in my uh, comments below. So if anybody wants to check out that video, they can. It's really good. Um, yeah, Joe Zabo's got a lot of good videos. He's got videos on applying laminate and painting cabinets and stuff like that. <clears throat> so if you ever want to look for some good videos to watch, definitely his channel. All right, so I'm going to uh, put this down now, and then we'll let it dry, and then we will... Uh, you know, put some, uh, put some paint down.
Okay, so we have both sides cut, sealed, and two coats of paint. Uh, this is the insides of the cabinet. So uh, the second uh, coat of paint is drying right now. So this is probably about as far as I'm gonna take it for uh, this video. Um, next week, what I'll probably do is I will take, uh, start transferring the blocking from that original piece over there and put it onto this piece. And then we will put it onto the cabinet. Uh, that's the cabinet. I'm just using the cabinet right now as a saw horse because I only had two saw horses here. But anyway, yeah, so um, we'll put the blocking on. Oh, and drill the holes where they need to go for the carriage bolts. Slap it on, tighten it up, stand it up, see how it looks. If it looks good, then we put it onto the other side and do the same. We take that side off and transfer all the blocking onto this piece. Uh, so we're looking good. Uh, oh, and I'm probably going to replace this bottom piece because I was looking at it pretty closely on the... It, it's kind of filthy and there's like some dark spots of crud and mold and stuff on it. So it'll take two seconds to just pop that bottom plate off and put a new piece of plywood on there. Um, so I will do that. And probably this back piece too. This is particle board, but you can see it's all water damaged and corroded. So that piece, new bottom, new front, and that is gonna be new as well. Uh, so pretty much everything, except for the, <laughs> the insides are all the same and the top is original. Uh, but the insides are all original and the top, but everything else um, just had too much water damage. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's about as far as I'm gonna take it for this video right now. Uh, thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Yeah.